A spaceship was on its way to Mars after traveling for eight months from Earth. Anticipation and excitement filled the air. It was the first time people were going to Mars since they landed on the moon many years ago. In the control center, Alex, overseeing the intricate dance of technology and destiny, received Chapad's report with a mix of excitement and apprehension. The Martian sky looked clear, they were getting ready to land and made the historic descent that lay ahead. Suddenly, they ran into a massive storm in the thermosphere that messed up their autopila. Chapek tried to take manual control, but the storm was too strong. Alex wanted to call off the mission to keep the astronauts safe, but Minister Lulet said they had to keep going because the trip cost a lot of money. They had to figure out how to save the spaceship from the storm. The only option was to detach the main part of the spaceship and the lab module to make it lighter so the booster rockets could bring it back into space. But someone had to stay inside the cabin to release the locks. Chapev decided to sacrifice himself to save his friends. When they let go of the central part, the booster rockets pushed the spaceship back into orbit, but Chapev didn't make it back. He bravely gave his life to save the mission. Following the tragic events, Alex took to the podium in a somber press conference, facing a barrage of questions from the gathered media. He recounted the harrowing tale of their ill-fated mission, highlighting the bravery and sacrifices of Commander Chapev, a man renowned for his skills and a cherished friend to Alex. Chapev's selfless act of detaching the main module to save his crewmates had ended in tragedy, as the module met a catastrophic end upon impact with the Martian surface. With heavy hearts, the mission was deemed a failure and efforts shifted towards bringing the remaining astronauts back home. However, amidst the desolation of Mars, a miraculous turn of events unfolded. Two sections of the obliterated module miraculously reappeared, seemingly untouched by the devastation. And then, a signal from the Red Planet itself, a communication transmission from Commander Chapev. Chapev was alive and well. The revelation sent shockwaves through the control center and beyond his disbelief mingled with awe. The astronaut they had mourned as lost was, in fact, alive, defying the odds and making history as the first human to walk upon the Martian soil. It was a moment of utter awe and wonder. In a conversation with Minister Lulet, Alex outlined their plan to expedite the next mission to bring Chapev safely back to Earth. Still, it would require a large amount of additional funding. However, the minister's reaction was far from supportive. He expressed outrage at allocating another 500 trillion in funds solely to rescue one astronaut, deeming Alex a proposal ludicrous. To Minister Lulud, pouring such a colossal sum into a space mission with uncertain outcomes seemed absurd. He argued that the funds would be better utilized addressing pressing matters on Earth rather than embarking on what he perceived as a futile endeavor. In the face of the minister's stern opposition, Alex was at odds with the bureaucratic constraints hindering their efforts to bring Chapa home. The clash of priorities highlighted the inherent tension between pursuing ambitious space exploration goals and addressing the immediate needs of humanity on Earth. In a phone call to her boss, Roman, journalist Grisa delivered shocking news. The story they had published in the newspaper was flawed. Contrary to reports, the rumored deceased astronaut was alive, and his landing module, presumed to have exploded, remained intact. Roman's response was measured, advising Greece to stay composed in light of the revelation, attributing the misinformation to the Russian space agency's errors. The revelation of Chapev's survival sparked a brilliant idea, creating a TV show documenting his daily life on Mars and broadcasting it worldwide. They reached out to the Russian space agency to propose a collaboration. Initially hesitant, Alex rejected the idea, deeming it unethical to exploit Chapev's struggle for survival as entertainment. However, Roman's offer of substantial financial gains eventually swayed Alex's decision. He saw the profits as a means to bring Chapev back to Earth and uphold the Russian space agency's reputation by ensuring the safe return of its astronauts. Moreover, Alex saw the TV show as an opportunity to shed light on Chapev's daily struggles in space, hoping it would foster empathy and understanding among viewers. He viewed it as more than just a profit-driven venture, it was a chance to showcase the human side of space exploration and the resilience of astronauts like Chapev. Upon reaching the control room, Alex swiftly directed the entire crew to inspect every module system while simultaneously initiating an operation to rescue the team. Upon thorough analysis, they discovered two intact segments of the laboratory module, but unfortunately, only one was operational. Shapev activated the autonomous robot Pathfinder on Mars to assess which module parts were still operational. They found that the life support system could provide oxygen for up to 30 months, and the 10-ton water reserve would last just as long. However, there was a shortage of food supplies. The primary concern arose when the nuclear reactor malfunctioned, leaving only 13 months of energy reserves. This shortage posed a severe threat to the proper functioning of the life support system. 
If they expedited the construction of the spacecraft, they could launch within the next six months, taking advantage of the closest distance between Mars and Earth. Scientists propose that the Russian Space Agency collaborate with the Indonesian Space Agency, LAPN, known for its hyperspace technology. This way, they could reach Mars and bring Chape back to Earth in less than 13 months. However, the pressing question remained, would Chape survive until then? Alex's mind was awash with concern. Astronaut psychologist Anna reassured that Chapev's physical fitness should help him endure. However, she warned of potential psychological challenges like delusions or stress from being alone on an alien planet. On Mars, the Pathfinder detected unusual movements around the cabin, unsettling Chapev. Despite his attempts to sleep, rest eluded him. Finally, Anna reached out, advising Chapev to get some rest. The following day, Minister Lulut reached out to Chapev, sharing plans to collaborate with a TV station to broadcast a show depicting his daily life, allowing people to keep track of his well-being so that people could monitor his condition. Without delay, the TV station crew began adapting the control room. While some doubted Chapev's willingness to participate, Minister Lulut assured them that the commander appeared enthusiastic, even though Chapev seemed indifferent to the idea. With everything set up, the show was about to air in the next hour, and Grisa was ready to take on the presenter role. She encouraged Chapev not to hold back and even suggested he perform some stunts to captivate the audience. However, Chapev seemed indifferent to her words, preoccupied instead with tending to the remaining greenery in the laboratory. As the TV show began airing, millions of viewers tuned in from around the world, with a significant audience from all over the world. Grisa had arranged for a select group to communicate directly with Chapev, but he unexpectedly interrupted. He shared that the weather on Mars was sunny, with daytime temperatures reaching about 21 degrees Celsius, while nights were bitterly cold. However, there was one crucial aspect that made life on Mars stand out, the absence of wars, political turmoil, and major disasters like those seen on Earth. Chapev emphasized that on Mars, there were no reports of crimes like robberies or murders, the only challenges were occasional sandstorms. He highlighted the planet's tranquility, stating that all Martians lived happily, governed by leaders known for their integrity and honesty, devoid of any traces of corruption. His words subtly critiqued the state of affairs on Earth, suggesting that despite Mars being a desolate planet, it offered the peace and harmony many longed for amidst the chaos of earthly life. Meanwhile, the Pathfinder robot rover diligently continued its mission, traversing the Martian terrain, its sensors keenly attuned to any anomalies in its surroundings. In the afternoon, a mysterious gust of wind approached the laboratory, producing unique sound waves. Chapev noticed it, but when he looked out the window, he saw nothing. So he contacted the control center to inquire if they had also heard the sound waves, but they reported detecting nothing unusual. At the studio, Grisha contacted Roman. She expressed concern that the first day of the broadcast didn't go as planned, citing Chapev's idealism as a potential issue. However, Roman remained undeterred. He emphasized that the show wasn't solely about Chapev, but rather about life and death on Mars. Chapev's authentic behavior accurately portrayed the challenges of survival. The positive response to the first broadcast indicated that viewers appreciated Chapev's honesty and wanted the Mars show to continue. As time passed, Chapev showcased his daily routines including tending to plants, engaging in two and accessions with schoolchildren, and sharing intriguing facts about the Red Planet, which captivated the audience. Despite the challenges, such as the difference in taste of Martian-grown onions compared to those on Earth, Chapev's determination shone through. His occasional blunders even brought laughter to viewers. Before long, the TV show skyrocketed to the top of the ratings chart. Chapev emerged as a newfound celebrity for people back on Earth. Since the inaugural broadcast, Anna had developed a closer bond with Chapev, which understandably sparked jealousy in her fiancé Peter. They even argued about the situation. As viewer demand surged, so did the broadcast hours, leaving the scientists concerned. Each broadcast depleted three days' worth of backup resources already in short supply. The looming fear was whether Chapev could endure the next 13 months under such strain. Alex, grasping the gravity of the situation, conveyed to Roman the necessity of scaling back the number of broadcasts to ensure Chapev's survival. However, Roman remained adamant about pressing on with the broadcasts, citing the correlation between viewership numbers, financial gains, and the practicality of the rescue mission. Alex deliberates over the dwindling energy reserves in the control room with his confidant. To ramp up the broadcasts, they'd need to boost power consumption to rake in more funds. Both Chapev and Alex found themselves backed into a corner. Chapev would strive to endure, while Alex would pull out all the stops. 
Upon reaching a consensus, the studio installed additional filming gear in a control room, necessitating the removal of some communication devices to free up space. It left the staff in a quandary, especially Anna, who fretted over Chepov's physical well-being and the rapid depletion of backup power each passing day. With unwavering determination, Alex laid bare the harsh truth they lacked the necessary government funds to orchestrate Chapa's return. Thus, they embarked on the audacious path of broadcasting, not merely to entertain but to raise the vital funds needed to bring their comrade home. Later that night, Chapa heard mysterious noises swirling around the cabin, accompanied by a peculiar blue light akin to an electromagnetic wave. It seemed to be tinkering with the laboratory module. The room lit up brightly once it finished its task as if the power source had been restored to its maximum capacity. The following day during a broadcast, Chapev shared his knowledge of the universe with the children in the studio. He described the universe as expansive and enigmatic, with Earth merely a speck. The more humanity gazes scoured, the deeper their curiosity about the cosmos grows. It's as though there's a call from beyond, urging humans to explore. That's why he embarked on his journey to Mars, to seek answers, comprehend our origins, and ponder our destination once we depart. He harbored hopes of unraveling the mysteries of the universe in some distant corner of space. Later, one of the children inquired if there were aliens on Mars. Chapev recalled the first time he woke up on Mars, hearing a voice as if something were attempting to communicate with him. He firmly believed that humans were not solitary beings in the universe. However, his words raised concerns among those in the control center, who began to suspect Chape of experiencing delusions. Alex attempted to delve deeper into what Chapev truly meant. Chapev recounted that upon awakening in that place, he heard an eerie sound as though something was attempting to communicate with him. He firmly believed that humans were not solitary entities in the vast universe. However, the reaction from the control center cast doubt on Chapev's sanity, accusing him of delusion. Alex attempted to clarify what Chapev meant. Chapev elaborated, explaining that when he heard the strange voices, it felt like they were conveying a message. All of this resulted from humanity's actions. There was no genuine passage of time, no real Mars. Humans had fabricated these planets only to destroy them later. Humanity's rampant chaos and overpopulation were to blame. According to Chapev, what he experienced was a consequence of human intervention, and he should have perished upon impact with the surface. Chapev's explanation proved perplexing to comprehend. Anna inquired about the peculiar sound Chapev had mentioned. Chapev described it as resembling a melody yet intricately intertwined with his emotions, fluctuating in tandem with his mood. Anna speculated that Chapev might be experiencing hallucinations or feeling frustrated after spending months alone on Mars. Shortly afterward, the music resurfaced, but unfortunately, Anna remained unaware that the computer had captured the sound. Chapev didn't mind being perceived as eccentric, he simply recounted his experiences. His robotic explorer repeatedly detected unidentified objects traversing the vicinity of the laboratory. As concerns mounted about his well-being, Peter realized that his computer had recorded the sound. However, when Peter urged Anna to communicate with Chapev, she misconstrued his intentions, believing it wasn't the appropriate time to discuss their relationship. On Mars, Chapev sensed something peculiar occurring within him. Suddenly, he found himself capable of hearing the thoughts of humans on Earth and even discerning the current events unfolding in the control center. Despite his remarkable experiences, others dismissed him as delusional due to his prolonged isolation on the planet. Frustration engulfed Chapev as he questioned whether everything he perceived was merely a figment of his imagination. The following day, the absence of Chapev on the TV show sparked speculation and concern among viewers. Anna's efforts to establish communication with him went unanswered, leaving a palpable sense of unease in the control center. Meanwhile, the rover robot diligently continued its surveillance, meticulously analyzing the detected anomalies. For the first time, it registered the presence of blue-colored waves. As the days passed, the sense of apprehension gradually subsided, replaced by a semblance of normalcy. Chapev's return to the TV show brought a sense of relief to many, his demeanor unchanged despite the recent disturbances. His presence again captivated audiences, and his charismatic persona resonated deeply with viewers. In the ensuing weeks, Chapev's influence transcended the realm of celebrity, morphing into a beacon of inspiration for millions worldwide. His words and actions carried weight, shaping perceptions and influencing lifestyle choices. From fashion trends to philosophical insights, Chapev's impact extended far beyond the confines of the TV screen. A sense of relief swept through the control center as news of the safe return of the three astronauts reached Earth. Yet, amidst the jubilation, Anna couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss with Chapev. As a psychiatrist, she felt compelled to delve deeper into the enigma surrounding his recent behavior.
Seeking solace and guidance, Anna turned to her fiancé Peter, hoping he might shed light on the situation. To her surprise, Peter revealed a startling revelation. Shapov's experiences were not mere delusions but manifestations of a mysterious voice captured on the recording. The revelation sent shockwaves through the control center, prompting a revaluation of their perceptions of Chapev's plight. Suddenly, the possibility that Chapev's encounters were grounded in reality rather than mere figments of imagination loomed large. Frustrated by the lack of direct communication with Chapev, Anna turned to Peter, imploring him to facilitate a connection. However, their attempts were thwarted as all access to Mars seemed blocked, leaving them in the dark about Chapev's well-being. Meanwhile, on the desolate terrain of Mars, Chapev's demeanor belied the jovial facade he had exhibited on the televised broadcasts. Tension hung thick in the air as he meticulously monitored the movements of the Pathfinder outside, a stark contrast to the carefree persona he had projected to the world. The discovery of the blue beam's movement around the spacecraft alarmed Chapev. Suddenly, a surge of energy pulsed through the fuselage, sending shockwaves of concern through the control center. Despite the warning signs, the Pathfinder robot trailed the beam's trajectory. However, a lapse in vigilance led to disaster as the robotic explorer tumbled into a nearby ravine, sustaining critical damage. The following day, Minister Lulut contacted Roman to discuss their collaboration. Lulut granted Roman freedom to showcase anything on the TV show, albeit with a stern reminder that the Chape brand remained under his jurisdiction. Additionally, Lulut emphasized the importance of fulfilling their agreement regarding the profits generated from the broadcast. In a meeting with Minister Lulud, Alex sought clarification on the timeline for launching the expedition to retrieve Chape from Mars. However, instead of reassurance, Alex was met with dismissal. The minister criticized Alex for his naivety, asserting that the likelihood of successfully rescuing Chape was slim to none. Consequently, the minister deemed further missions unnecessary, deeming the current endeavor a failure. Alex couldn't comprehend the minister's pessimism. He questioned the minister's motives, especially considering the earlier acceptance of the TV show idea to fund Chapa's retrieval. On Mars, Chapa frequently sensed the presence of alien entities lurking around him, causing him discomfort and eventually leading to him losing consciousness. Meanwhile, on Earth, Alex received a perplexing response from Minister Lulut, leaving him with more questions than answers. Seeking clarity, Alex turned to Roman, hoping for a straightforward explanation of their agreement. However, Roman evaded providing a definitive response, assuring Alex that everything would proceed smoothly the next day. In the studio, viewers tuned in to watch Chapev's broadcast, expecting his usual insightful commentary. However, to their surprise, the figure they saw on screen was not Chapev. Still, Grissa was digitally inserted to mimic Chapev's appearance using CGI effects. This revelation left viewers bewildered and questioning the authenticity of the broadcast. Amidst the chaos, a determined group stormed the headquarters, swiftly apprehending those involved in the elaborate scam. Unveiling a mastermind behind the curtain, Minister Lulut orchestrated the scheme for his selfish ambitions, using the proceeds from the broadcast to fuel his presidential aspirations. The revelation sent shockwaves through the community, but no one felt the impact more profoundly than Alex. Betrayed and burdened by his unfulfilled promise to this dear friend, he was barred from entering the control center. Undeterred, Alex's martial prowess enabled him to incapacitate the guard and gain access. He was determined to confront the truth alongside his colleagues. As public sentiment turned against him, Chapa faded from the collective consciousness, his once heroic image tarnished and his plight forgotten. Doubts swirled about the authenticity of the Mars mission and whether Chapa was truly stranded on the distant planet. Meanwhile, on the desolate Martian landscape, Chapev stirred from slumber, awakened by an enigmatic presence that enveloped the spacecraft. Despite the uncertainty surrounding him, Chapev appeared strangely serene, a subtle smile playing on his lips as he contemplated the mysteries of the cosmos. After numerous attempts, Chapev finally responded to Alex's call, and Alex expressed his sincere apology for failing to fulfill his promise. The atmosphere among the team had plummeted, with morale at an all-time low and individuals seizing the opportunity for personal gain. Many had lost faith in the legitimacy of Chapev's Mars mission, convinced that he had perished in the crash landing. This prevailing belief left them hopeless about ever bringing him back to Earth. Chapev simply affirmed his presence before the self-destruct mode was activated, leading to the explosion of the laboratory module into countless fragments.
The detonation was captured by a satellite orbiting Mars and broadcast globally. Chapav's deliberate act of detonating the module served as both confirmation of his survival on Mars and validation of the authenticity of the Mars mission. The news left everyone in stunned silence, devoid of any tears. Without the module, the question loomed large, how could Chapa possibly endure on the desolate landscape of Mars? On Mars, Chapa ventured outside in his astronaut gear after triggering the explosion of the lab module. Determined to establish communication with Earth, he set out to locate the enigmatic entity attempting to contact him, claiming to be the creator of planets. Meanwhile, Alex began to grasp the essence of Chapev's previous messages, that humans, paradoxically, are extraterrestrial beings themselves, shaping reality, altering the course of the world, and sometimes even bringing about its destruction. Humanity, he realized, is both the cause of its problems and the potential solution. Despite this, the insatiable human curiosity about the mysteries of space persists as we remain an integral part of the vast universe. So, what did you think of the movie? Leave it in the comments below, and if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you in the next video.